in module 9.1 with a short um, kind of detour from confidence intervals, um, calculating confidence intervals, but it's an important question too, which is um, researchers want to know, right? They want to know how many people do I actually need to include in my research? And so a way we do that is we connect this idea of what's the smallest sample size needed for a certain margin of error because researchers want to be um, confident, right, and with their results, and they ask their questions. Well, I only want to be—I want to be 95% confident. To be 95% confident, you can work backwards and determine how many people you need to include in your sample. And so you—you you see, as we have our original formula for margin of error here, what happens is you don't need to know the math, but the math gets uh, completed, and you get this equation, which involves the other. Um, values, your critical Z, your margin of error, which you ahead of time specify, and then your P and Q. Now, P and Q, uh, most cases are unknown, so what happens is you just use a 0.50 for each, like, and then when you do 0.50 times 0.50, you get 0.25. And so that's the formula you use ahead of time because we rarely know, right? We don't know what P is, so we use, um, that estimate like that and then you can see an example i want to be 90 uh, percent confident 3.5 points margin of error notice how i use this equation I'm looking for the sample size i know what proportion i'm looking for but i want a margin of error three and a half only uh, i want to be 95 percent confident so i plug the numbers in and then you get this value here so again sometimes uh, students get confused about how this is connected again it's connected to this the confidence interval formula for margin of error and then we're working backwards because i want to specify up front what level of confidence i want and my margin of